Hi, everyone. I'm Mrs. Gross Fawn, instructional coach for Logansport High School and the Century Career Center, and I wanted to talk to you about docs. So let's go ahead and take a look and dive in. Uh, there's nothing quite like a beautiful MLA formatted document. And so I was just going to show you this lovely um, essay that we have here. And it looks so academic and wonderful, but where do we even begin? So if we are on our Chromebook, then we might just be looking at something like this. So where do I go? What do I do? You can go to your shelf, and I believe Docs is going to be pinned there for you. If you don't see it, go over to the left to your launcher. And if you still don't see it, click that up arrow, and it's going to turn up somewhere, and you can search for it or just look for that icon. If you don't see it there, check a second or a third page just to make sure. But... Um, it, it should be available for you. So I'm going to go ahead and launch it from the Chrome shelf. And notice it's basically just going to the Internet. Now I'm at docs.google.com. I'm in my Chrome browser and it says, hey, start a new document or look at some of the ones that you have opened recently. So I'm going to go ahead and just start with a blank document and go over some of the things that we can do. Now, a lot of times we just start our assignment and um, right now I'm waiting for this to finish doing its circle. We just go ahead and normally we just start right in and we start our assignment. And so if I start typing something about um, schnauzer dogs make great pets, if I go back later and think, oh wait, I forgot to title this, if you click in here, it thinks, hey, do you want that to be your title? Well, probably not for an essay title or something like that. So I'll just go ahead and make this schnauzers. And it's telling me that because I started it the way I did, that it's in my drive. If for any reason you're up here and you think, ooh, this is going to be an assignment for English and you've made a folder, go ahead and click on that. Get down in your drive. Scroll for your English folder. Click on that and you can move it there. Or even if you have a subfolder, I don't believe I do. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and move it into that English folder. And now it's going to be in the right place and I'll know where to find it. So I am uh, connected to Wi-Fi, but if I needed to work offline, it tells me that it is ready for offline use. I'll dismiss their little note here and I'll go ahead and um, I'll... I'll see that this is really a plain looking document. I need to add a lot of text to this before we can do much with it. Just hang on. Okay, so I've added some text to this and you can tell this is not the same as that MLA. So basically, if you need to start really setting things up um, and you've already started typing, then what we'll do is highlight the text we want to deal with. And let's say that we forgot that the teacher wanted this double spaced and we think, OK, I've already typed it. What do I do now? There's a couple different ways you can find the spacing. But if we start looking at some of these pictures, they're going to tell us what they do. If we just kind of hover and I'm going to go all the way over with the lines and the arrows and I'm going to click this one and I'm going to change this to double. So that's looking better already. And you may notice my font is a size 11. And if you want MLA, it needs to be size 12. Now, Arial is a good font. Times New Roman is going to be requested a lot. But if this is not for an, a super uh, serious academic paper and you're allowed to have a little bit of fun, I'm going to suggest going into the fonts and checking out some of the things that you can do. So I've looked into the fonts and they come with some preset fonts. But you can always click more fonts. And I believe people develop these all the time and they're they're always changing. So if we want to see, um, let's just say, some handwriting fonts. I've already added a couple of different ones here. So maybe I want to take a look at uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna pick this one. I'm gonna say okay. We're gonna take a second here. It looks like it changed it, but if you want to just start fresh with a new font. Go back up there, click in there, click more fonts. I'll go to show all this time. I'll pick display. Let's go with this one and I'll click OK. And I'm going to start typing. Does this look different? And it does. 
So that's just a little bit of fun that you can have if you haven't messed around with the font options. So we know that generally we're going to work on our paper. It's going to go all the way to whatever page requirement the teacher has given us or word requirement. If for any reason your teacher gave you a word count, then you can basically, I'm just, I like to highlight things when I know, want to know what's going on. But if we go into tools and we click that word count, it probably would have done it whether I highlighted or not. But anyway, so it's telling me that I have 60 words. So I've got a long way to go if I have a 1200 word limit. But um, if I want it to show up while I'm typing, then I can click that and I'm going to say, okay. So those are just some general requirements that usually we have to think about when it comes to docs. So if I want to maybe jazz this up a little bit, I don't just have to have text. I can go over and I can insert. I'll click on that. I can insert lots of different things. And I'll probably make a whole video just on dealing with images and tables and um, some of these other options that we have. But if you go to image, you see you have all these options and notice this icon. This icon is also over here. So I'll click that and I'll go to insert image and we can see that we can pick different places for images. But I wanted to show you another place to get images and this time it's going to be with tools and then go down to this explore option. And now this basically is just going to bring up the web for us. So if I search docs in the web, maybe this time I'll type miniature schnauzer and it's um, giving me some information. So one, I can make sure that I've picked the right name for the right dog, uh, associating this image here with the information. And maybe I just wanted to double check a fact before I said anything in my paper, or maybe I do want to use some information from here. I'll just make sure that I give them proper credit. If you are wanting an image, you can go to images and I like this one. He looks like a happy schnauzer. So I'm going to pick this one and look, I just hit the plus and inserted it. It may not be where I wanted it and it is really big. So again, you'll have to start messing around with some of those options and find out where your dog went. Maybe he ran away. So we got to get him back here and I'm going to resize, resize. So he looks pretty happy. I'm just going to leave him there for now. So if you need to um, check out what you already have in your drive, there's no plus sign here. And um, actually, if I took out the word miniature, let me get rid of that really quickly and then hit enter. In my drive, um, I have other things associated with just the word schnauzer, but there's no plus sign on that. So um, it would be nice to be able to, you know, just grab an image pretty easily and insert that into your document. And there are different ways of wrapping your images. Uh, you'll see this one is in line. This one's wrap text. I generally go with wrap text when I'm using images and I'll move him up even a little bit more up there. So he's, he's looking um, pretty good. All right. I'm going to remove that space that was bothering me. So I don't have a title on this document yet. So that's probably something that uh, your teacher would want. I'm going to hit enter a couple times and move that down. And I'm going to type, whoops, uh, that looked a lot bigger than uh, the other letters. That was interesting. So if I click on this, then one thing I'm going to want to do, I'm going to close this explore. And now I find all those things like center and I've got myself a nice little title right here. So that's good. So if I am finished with this document and I'm ready to kind of just wrap things up, if this is something important, then I can go in and I can star it and it's going to add it to the starred section in my drive. And if I forgot, wait, I put this in my English folder, but actually, wait, I need to change it. It needs to go in my American literature folder. Then you can still make that change. It's okay. So we'll hit move. So I'm going to dismiss the little note they gave me. And we have all of our options that we're used to, like undo and redo and print. So you just kind of need to hover over all of these things. And when you go to file, 
you can share from here or on the top right where you see that share button. And so I'll go ahead and click on share. If you just want to share this with one person, maybe I want to share it with my personal um, email and I just want to be able to view it there, then I can do that. And so maybe Mrs. Minx would like to read about schnauzers and I got to pay attention. Do I want her to be able to edit it, which means to write on it and change things? She might remove that really cute picture and I'd be sad. So just double check whether they can view or just comment. Maybe she needs to tell me some changes I need to make, and um, but I don't want her to actually make them. So she will get an email about that and I can write her a message. Will you proofread question mark and she will get that and I'm going to um, she doesn't know about this, so normally I would just hit send, but I don't want her to think she actually has to do any work right now. The other option is just to get this link, and I would always, before you hit copy link, um, I'm going to click on change. I'm going to say got it. They keep sending me these notifications. The reason I wanted to click down there, and we can click on these options, so here are some of our choices, but also notice now I know they too can be editors and I just want them to be viewers. So I'm gonna update that before I copy the link. And once I copy it, now I can put it either in Schoology, I can put it in an email to a group that I've already created. If uh, I know anywhere you can put a link, you can put that. So notice I copied that link. And while I have a link handy, I wanted to show you something. So let me go down here. Let me hit enter a few times. If you ever want to insert a link in a document and you don't want it to come out that really long, let me right click here, that really long sort of ugly text, you know, it's just, it's, it's really not, um, I would say ideal. I wanted to point out if you're dealing with links, then you can click the insert link and it's going to just clean everything up. I'm going to say schnauzer paper. And then I'm going to go here and I'm going to right click and paste that link and click apply. And let's look at the difference. Which one do you like better? The really long one with all the gobbledygook or the one that tells you exactly what you're going to get if you click on it. I prefer this one down here. So if you're dealing with a lot of links, especially that's also going to be helpful. It's just going to clean up your document and everyone will be happier. Something that I wanted to bring up was, let's say that now you're ready to really double check. You want to read through. You want to make sure you have all of your punctuation in the right place. Um, I was back up here a minute ago, and I'm going to go back there again. I'm going to click this Zoom. I always like to go to about 125 or 150% when I'm editing because it just shows up. Uh, bigger for me, I can catch things. I can tell if I needed to have a comma somewhere and I'm gonna hit enter on here. But what if you couldn't type at all? What if you broke your arm last week and everyone else is trying to stay six feet away and they don't wanna sit up by you and, and handwrite or type your paper for you while you talk? Let's check out one of our tools. So if we go to tools and we go to voice typing, I'm gonna to click to speak. Now it is going to start typing everything that I say, period. It is not going to know when I need a punctuation mark, so I have to tell it to put a punctuation mark, period. So if you were really listening, you didn't hear me typing. You didn't hear a click click of the keyboard. It was just all of these things that I was saying. So again, if I want to check to make sure if I did use that, that I have all of the punctuation mark marks that I need. So I think that's a helpful tool. I'll go ahead and close that. And I actually um, kind of forgot about that tool when I did have a student who broke his arm and luckily he had a friend uh, help type things for him. So that was nice. So we talked about going to file and sharing. And if for any reason you want to start a document, but you kind of want to make some changes, but you're not sure what it's going to do, you can always make a copy and then mess around with the copy so you still keep your original. You can see we can email this as an attachment. And if for whatever reason, if there are problems with sharing files, you can always download it as a PDF and then attach that 
file or upload that file. And that is a lifesaver sometimes. Um, sometimes when we're working between devices and programs, not all of the formatting comes through. So um, I can go in if I needed to and see all the changes that I made. I can rename it. You know, I can move it from here just like I could earlier up there. And obviously I can uh, move it to the trash if it's no good, but I would hate to think that. Now, one thing I want to point out is if you did forget some things about this, um, like where did I put it? Where is it? Oh, here it is in the American literature. And I started it um, on 735 and then I just made a change at 750. Sometimes that's helpful. And if I had shared it, if I had actually um, sent that email to Tammy, it would have said uh, that Mrs. Minx had access to that as well. So on our editing options, those are just pretty basic. And on our view, I did talk about um, perhaps viewing it in a different uh, size, like 125 or 150%, but you can also see or not see the ruler if you want that to go away. Notice it just gave me a little more space on the screen. But if you need that ruler, I sometimes like to know where things are and if they're centered, then I use that. So we've already looked at insert, but if you're one of those people, you like to have things organized, you're gonna wanna play around with table. I'll go ahead and enter just a really short table right here. And these can, whoops, um, I can type what I want in there. I can move these. Maybe this is just gonna be like the number one and the number two thing about schnauzers and then my information goes here. You can add pictures to that as well. But what's interesting is even though I have this uh, table that I got from inserting it, if I want to format anything, so I highlighted a row there, I actually have to go to format the table. And then there are some of my options for maybe adding extra rows or columns or deleting them. So just remember, even though you used insert to get it, you'll use format to adjust it. And so that's something that um, I think is helpful when you're trying to really organize a bunch of information. So I'll go back to this insert. And um, if you want to actually make a drawing, you can do it new from here if you need to explain a concept. And um, obviously, if you don't know about Google Drawings yet, you want to wait till you deal with that. You can add some charts. There's all sorts of great things. If you are very serious about your content, you'll start messing with headings and then you can make a table of contents. Um, if for any reason you wanna add a comment like, does this look right? And then I hit um, comment here. Now I know this is my own document, so that might seem silly, but uh, at least uh, at least I know that that comment function is going to bring up that text box. And when you start getting into sharing documents and editing documents, you're going to do a deep dive into comments. So I'm going to go back to format. We can see lots of great options here. I don't think anything too new and earth shattering. And we did kind of look at some of our tools. Add-ons are not really available on our school account right now. So if you want to play around with add-ons, I suggest using your personal Gmail account if you have one. There are some fun ones. I know a lady talks about one that changes the color of every letter to be in the order of the rainbow. So if you feel like getting really creative, you're going to want to check that out on your personal account. And so I think for the most part, we have gone over docs in such a way that you can at least get started. And so if I'm finished, um, then I know I can go here and I can share and use those functions to get it at the right setting. And so I hope this helps you get off to a good start with Doc.